thank everyone for being here for our Sloan C Certificate Program webinar. It is so great to see you all. As Sandra mentioned, my name is Bethany Bovard and I'm going to facilitate this webinar. Um, just a little about myself. I uh, work as an instructional designer and e-learning uh, technologist for the Sloan Consortium, a job that I love because it lets me work with so many great faculty uh, such as yourselves all around the world. Um, for the purposes of this webinar, just so you know, I am one of the primary designers or developers of our current certificate program, although it was a joint effort which uh, I'll talk more about later. I have been an online teacher for 15 years, a teacher and curriculum developer, and also have specialized in online faculty development for the last 10 years. Uh, again, something I really enjoy. So now that you know a little bit about me, I would uh, appreciate it if you all could introduce yourselves in the chat room. I'd love to know who you are, where you're coming from, what your interest is in the Sloan Consortium Certificate Program, or anything else you'd like to share. I see a lot of people are typing now. Thank you so much. Um, and as Sandra mentioned, while we're doing these introductions in chat, um, questions are encouraged all the time throughout this presentation. So you can type your questions in the chat and we will pay uh, close attention to that. Or if you wish to speak, you can always raise your hand and I'll turn over the microphone to you so you can say whatever it is you need to say. Of course, at the end of the presentation, we'll also have a Q&A session uh, so that you can get any of your other questions about the certificate program answered. All right, I see some great intros coming in. We've got Kristen, a Director of e-learning development at SCAD. Oh, welcome, Kristen. Uh, Radhika, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Welcome. Aurora, thank you. Looks like we've got some fantastic people here with some wonderful experience in online teaching and learning. Program coordinator, hi Pam. Yetta, nice to see you. All right. Erin, coordinator for e-learning. Oops, the chat room bounces around so much. For, uh, faculty professional development at Virginia Tech, welcome. Joy, chief information officer at the Midwest uh, Liberal Arts College, welcome. Renee, it's nice to see you again. I'll be calling on you in a few minutes, Renee. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for introducing yourselves in chat. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue on, but if you haven't already introduced yourself, please go ahead and feel free to do so. So first, what is the Sloan C Certificate Program? Um, it is, above all, our signature program at the Sloan Consortium. And one of the features that we're really proud of of this program is our one-to-one -one mentoring. And uh, the whole program, along with the mentoring, is meant to help all faculty improve the quality of their online courses. This program has been co-developed by our core faculty and we think this is another big strength of the program because this core development helps to emphasize multiple perspectives and approaches to online teaching to help us address the needs of any faculty regardless of the field that they happen to be teaching in or the approach that they like to use. 
Something else that we really like about the program and we think is very helpful for you busy faculty is that you can work at your own pace. There is a uh, foundation course and then three electives and you, after you finish the foundation course you have up to a year to complete the uh, final requirements of, of the program, of the electives and so on. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But this is in brief some of the highlights of the program. We have a nice structure to the program that it begins with a foundation course which uh, is nine weeks long and covers some of the basics of online teaching and learning. Then there are uh, options for electives. We have many options. And for the program, you're required to take three electives to help complete your program and round out your knowledge and skills in a variety of areas of online teaching. We do teach our program in Moodle. And uh, right now, we're using Moodle 1.9 for those of you who are Moodle users. However, we're in the midst of an upgrade to Moodle 2.1. And we think that's going to bring a lot of wonderful opportunities and options for us to include new and interesting things in the program. While the program is primarily asynchronous, there are biweekly opportunities for synchronous events in Blackboard Collaborate. These are optional events because we know you're all very busy and sometimes synchronous events don't fit into your schedule. But they are there for you if you're the kind of person that likes to get together synchronously with others and talk about what you're learning and to ask the facilitator of the foundation course any questions and get support from the facilitator and your colleagues and uh, so on. And we really, we really like these uh, synchronous event opportunities, all of which are recorded. In case you aren't able to attend, you can always review what did happen in the session. As you can see on this slide, we do have in parentheses some of the information about cost. And uh, this is always a big question for people. So the foundation course is, as you can see, $1,499. And then the required electives are $345 to $495 each. Now, the foundation course doesn't have the ability to apply any coupons or anything, but the electives you do do have the ability to either apply membership coupons or use your college pass um, uh, a discount to help reduce the cost of those electives. Before I go any further, I just wonder if there are any questions about this basic structure of the program. I'm going to go into more details about each of these in a minute, but any questions at this point? Give me a smiley face if you're all ready to move on. Fantastic. Oh, great. And I see a few people found the smiley faces in the chat area. We love this new feature of Blackboard Collaborate, being able to easily add smiley faces and all sorts of other emoticons in the chat. <laughs> All right, so the foundation course, which again is nine weeks long, is meant to help you learn some core online teaching and course design skills and also to improve your knowledge and some of the basics of core online teaching um, information and strategies. The, the foundation course is meant to help you either begin to develop or to revise an online course that you have already. And all of the assignments and activities 
can be applied to that development or revision of your online course. We're really proud of this feature in the foundation course because it means that you each can take away from it what you need and to work on real activities rather than something that uh, you know, we've devised. So many people have expressed a great happiness with this particular feature. Throughout the foundation course and the program, you have many opportunities to work with a mentor, the facilitator of the foundation course, and also with the many peers that are taking the course with you. Now, again, we really appreciate this feature and we know from comments of people who have gone through the program that they especially appreciate the opportunity to exchange information and ideas with their peers and we do strongly encourage that throughout the program. Of course, the, after you finish the foundation course, then you get to choose from a variety of electives. We currently have over 70 different options for electives in a number of different areas from administration and accessibility to design and delivery and tools and techniques, even STEM and mobile learning and social media uh, tracks. And so, whatever your interest, there's plenty of options for you to choose from. These workshop electives cover both conceptual things and technical things. So, so you can develop not only knowledge in certain areas, but also skills with different tools um, of the trade, if you will. And as you can see here on the slide, I have listed some of the, the tracks that are various workshops fall under accessibility, admin, blended learning, design and delivery, social media, and tools and techniques are just some of them. Although, sneak peek for you all since you're here today, we are adding other tracks. We're working on uh, STEM workshops. Uh, somebody in this particular group here mentioned they're working on production of STEM workshops. So we're very excited about that. We also have some uh, mobile learning workshops and we're going to be including more options in that area as well. So we're really trying to stay on top of all the new trends and uh, techniques in online learning. Of course, the strength of any program is really in its faculty and we have some fantastic faculty in the certificate program. We have a wonderful uh, facilitator in the foundation course, many excellent mentors to help you along your uh, growth and development path through the program, and also wonderful workshop facilitators for all of the electives. And they've all consistently received excellent ratings for everything from their accessibility and supportiveness to their knowledge and effectiveness as online teachers, administrators, and so on. We have a wide range of faculty with many skills and they range from uh, professors and administrators to authors and award winners in the field of online teaching and learning. And so uh, we're just really excited to be able to uh, have all of them with us working on the program. And before I go any farther, we do have one mentor here today with us. Renee is with us and I would love if she would introduce herself and perhaps to say a few words to the rest of the group. Renee? Hi everyone. Um, I hope I'm coming in okay. Um, I'm excited for all of you that you are joining us today. Um, you are embarking on an amazing journey, uh, one that I still refer to. Um, I think I was one of the in one of the first groups. Um, I think in was it 2007. 
I graduated and I still refer to my binder from all of my workshops. I still speak with my mentor. She's phenomenal, uh, Dr. Susan Coe. And I just, I loved all of, you know, talking to everybody and learning new ideas and approaches. Um, so it was just a fabulous experience. And I think a major benefit of this program is that you're able to choose your path uh, and apply it based on your interests and or your uh, facilities needs. So um, I'm so excited for you and welcome. Thank you so much, Renee. Again, we are really lucky to have Renee with us as a mentor in our program. Uh, she's just wonderful. Her knowledge and skills in the field of online teaching are phenomenal. And I learn something new every time we communicate via email or uh, throughout the program as it's running. And I just feel blessed that she's part of our program. So thank you again, Renee. All right. Now that we've gotten some of the basics or the bird's eye view, if you will, of the program um, out of the way, I would like to go ahead and take you on a tour of some of the sites so I can show you some more information about the program in detail. I'm going to start with the Sloan Consortium uh, website where we have a great section of the site devoted to the certificate program uh, with all the information about the program that you could ever want. And uh, then we'll go ahead and move into taking a quick peek at the foundation course as it currently stands and the electives area just so you can get a feel for how things are laid out. Please give me a smiley face if you can see the Sloan Consortium website. Fantastic. And this is at sloanconsortium.org is where we are. This is the home page of our new site which we're very excited about and very proud of. If any of you had seen the previous version of the site and are now seeing this new version, if you think that we've done some wonderful things, can you give me a smiley face or a thumbs up to let me know what you think about our new and improved, beautiful and slick site? Thank you so much. We really like it. We think it's uh, uh, well organized and makes it easy to find things. So. For the certificate program, which is in our wonderful Sloan Sea Institute area, the center blue box, there is a direct link to the certificate program. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. When you're viewing the site, this is where you'd want to go to find all the up-to-date information about the program. So we're here on the certificate site and as you can see it's laid out. You can learn everything about the program objectives and benefits, the course sequence which gives you a week by week blow of the foundation course, um, the electives, customizing your program and so on and even learning more about the available mentors. I would like to point out at this time that we have a new cohort forming and it starts January 4th to March 9th and this link will take you to the registration page. But we have cohorts that form four times a year for this program. March 21st will be our next program and then for those of you who prefer to work during the summer months while perhaps you're not teaching, we do have a summer option June, starting in June. And then for those of you who like to to go crazy and have a full load of teaching in the fall and be practicing with new ideas and skills and information. We have a September starting session as well. All right, so I'm just going to take us to the course sequence. And what this provides 
Let me see if I can't zoom in a little bit to give you a better view. What this provides is a week by week listing of the topics for the foundation course along with the objectives for those weeks. So uh, we start off with introductions week where everybody gets a chance to know one another, learn about one another, and start making those uh, connections with uh, their peers that we feel are so important to the learning process. Uh, during this week while you're getting to know one another and your mentor and your facilitator, you'll also uh, start with uh, reading the syllabus and schedule and the other things that typically happen in the first week of any kind of course so you can learn the structure and requirements of the program. From that we move into week two where we talk about what is a quality online course and what does quality online teaching look like? We introduce you to several potential uh, online course development and online teaching rubrics so that you can start to make sense of or get a feel for you know, what should an online course look like and what should online teaching look like. And then course Throughout that week, you'll be discussing those rubrics and discussing key characteristics and sharing information and ideas with others about um, quality online courses and teaching. From there, we move into talking about the syllabus and schedule in an online environment. Some of the uh, elements of an effective online syllabus, how they differ from a face-to-face -face syllabus, um, how the syllabus can impact course quality, so what sorts of information you need to include for everything from learner support to uh, for academics to learner support for technical issues and so on. And of course during that week you'll start either developing or revising your online syllabus and schedule for your course that you're working on. From there we move into to online learning communities so that you can really start to get an appreciation for the importance of learning communities in the online course. Um, and this includes a lot of strong research in this area. Uh, the whole program does look at research as well as application of the research and application of skills. So for those of you who are just starting out, um, you'll be getting introduced to some new research. And for those of you who've been working in the field for a while, working in the online teaching field for a while, you'll have an opportunity to expand on your uh, research base and expand on your skills as well. From there, we move on to some emerging technologies. And in this area, you'll take a strong look at Web 2.0 tools that you can use, how you can combine them with your learning management system effectively to encourage things like student engagement, um, stronger opportunities for learning, and so on. And um, by all accounts, this week tends to be from the uh, participant perspective, quite an exciting week because there's so many different other tools that you can experiment with and share with others. And not only will these tools that you uh, get to take a peek at in week five help you with teaching and learning, but they'll also help you with things like reducing your workload in the online environment, which is an, uh, a, an important issue for most online teachers and help you stay organized and so on. From there, we'll move on to an overview of assessment and evaluation in the online environment so you can start thinking about the, the ways in which assessment might change in the online environment and how to evaluate your courses and your teaching in order to improve them. And also, um, you'll start taking a look at different types of assessments that you can use. 
and uh, you will have an opportunity to develop a learning activity at this point for your online course that you are developing or revising, including a quiz or some sort of assessment rubric. And again, you will be able to share these with all your peers in the workshop foundation course and get feedback from them before uh, anything gets graded, if you will. Then knowing that administrative aspects of online teaching are often left out in some online programs, we chose to devote the next two weeks to some of those issues. ADA, usability, and copyright issues are covered in week seven. And then workload management is covered in week eight. We want you to feel comfortable in these two weeks exploring these legal issues, uh, ADA and copyright, um, in order to make your courses more usable and make you feel comfortable knowing that you're putting a course out there that's not violating any copyright principles. And of course, knowing that workload management is such an important issue, we do cover that a lot in week eight. So you can understand where the areas are that you're likely to spend a lot of time and what sorts of things that you can do to reduce that time while still maintaining the quality of the online teaching and the student experience. All right, so that is the uh, foundation course outline. I'll stop at this point to see if there are any questions about the structure of the foundation course. You can go ahead and raise your hand or type your question in the chat. I see Yetta is typing. Yeah, there are live sessions. They're every other week. So um, these sessions are optional. The, the, the first week there is an orientation session that is live that we strongly encourage everyone to attend. And then in weeks three, five, seven, and nine, there are also live sessions available. Again, these are optional, um, but they are a great opportunity to uh, get together with your peers and with the facilitator of the foundation course and get any questions answered, um, and chat with others, and uh, get support. Yes, I like the live sessions as well. Mm -hmm. All right, and I know the facilitator of this, uh, the foundation course, really enjoys those live sessions. They usually have a fantastic time. Um, Sandra usually attends them. Sandra, do you have anything you'd like to add about the synchronous sessions? Sure, Bethany. They're really a, a fantastic opportunity. The facilitator, Julia Para. Um, starts off the session with just kind of recapping some of the things that are going on during the past two weeks. But then she really opens it up to allow participants to talk about questions and things that are going on um, within their development, within their reading, and through discussions. And she pulls together resources based on the questions and comments that they have, but other participants also add a lot to the discussion. So it's, it's a great community building activity that you can do throughout the program that really helps you enhance your learning and your course that you're working on. Thank you, Sandra. Renee, would you like to add anything about the foundation course uh, structure or address in more detail the K-12 uh, content concern that Victoria posted? Sure. Um, the foundation course is really kind of, it, it is just that, it's a foundation course. It helps, it positions you um, in a way where you you get the most out of any of the workshops that you take after that. And the foundation course uses best practices that um, are, are great from K to 12, higher ed, 
for-profit, non-profit. Um, these are really the best practices, and, and they are able to stretch over any type of institution and, and apply to any kind of course you're developing. So um, it really does put you in a, in a great place to succeed. Um, and then you can take it from there. And there's, um, Bethany will probably go through all of the different tracks. Um, you can customize your program to um, meet, meet your K-12 needs specifically. So um, I don't, I don't want to jump ahead, but I'm sure Bethany will, will go through that. Thank you, Renee. Uh, yes, so if there are no more questions about the foundation course um, at this point at least, then I'll go ahead and move on to the electives. The, the certificate program has, of course, as its starting point, the foundation course, which is nine weeks long, and, and that is what we just covered. From there, you have an opportunity to choose three electives to round out your program experience. And we've broken down for convenience um, these electives into several different specialization tracks. So for example, you might be particularly interested in accessibility, um, perhaps you uh, tasked with helping other faculty at your institution with this, um, with the accessibility issues, or perhaps um, you're an experienced online teacher already, but you want to augment your knowledge with something related to accessibility. So we do have a track in that area, and as you can see, we do list our workshops by track so you can see what's available to you to choose from. So in accessibility, you can learn about uh, enhancing accessibility. You can learn how to be more accommodating in your course design. You can learn about digital literacy for students with disabilities and also disability access. So uh, plenty of great opportunities here to focus on accessibility. Or perhaps administration is more your uh, cup of tea, if you will. Maybe you're in an administrative position and you're tasked at your university with uh, leading the charge on developing pro entire programs or helping your uh, faculty in a particular department with administrative issues and so on. So we do have an administrative check that focuses on things like academic integrity or helping your faculty avoid burnout or knowing more about copy com copyright compliance at the institutional level or even fair use in the TEACH Act. Uh, and effective leadership and so on, we have some wonderful uh, workshop electives opportunities in this area of administrative practices. Next, of course, we have a specialization in blended teaching and learning. So maybe at your institution, your department, or your entire institution is more interested in going a blended teaching route rather than a, a completely online route. For those of you in that situation, we do have a number of blended teaching and learning options. We have some related to designing courses for blended learning. We have some that focus on the asynchronous and synchronous um, aspects of blended teaching. We also have a whole series on blended learning. Uh, it's a three series workshop. And uh, starting with designing courses and going through delivering content and even staying organized. So um, some wonderful opportunities here for blended teaching and learning. After that, we have some design and delivery specialization. So perhaps you're an instructional designer or perhaps you're working at a uh, 
a unit that helps faculty at your institution design their courses and deliver their courses. Maybe you're providing some sort of uh, support just informally to your colleagues in your department. Whatever your situation might be, the design and delivery track can help you with that. And we focus on a number of uh, different areas in the design and delivery specialization. Everything from learning more about adult learning styles to uh, focusing on uh, developing um, collaborative activities in the classroom, or maybe you're at an institution that really strongly encourages uh, collaboration and discussion. We have a wonderful workshop in that area. Of course, workshops also on assessment and motivation, and even um, how to move your course content online. Let's say you have a course that you've previously only taught face-to-face, -face and your institution has asked you to teach it online. We, we have workshops that will help you address those concerns as well. As you can see, we have a wonderful list here. We're constantly updating all of these lists on our site. That's why I've taken you here rather than putting these on the slides so that you know exactly where to find this information. We do have a mobile learning track, which we're expanding. We hope to have at least two more options before the end of 2012, or preferably before the middle of 2012. Um, right now, we have an intro to mobile learning, but we're also hoping to get one on developing mobile learning games and some other uh, unique opportunities for mobile learning. We know this is an area that's really taken off, given the number of people with smartphones in the United States. And um, also, just the number, uh, the sheer number of mobile devices in the hands of most people, from iPads and uh, iPhones to uh, other uh, tablet devices and so on. So this is a track, if you're in an institution that's moving forward with mobile learning, for example, it's something you might be interested in. And of course, what would options be without a social media track? We know that this is really important to a lot of faculty, including social media like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and so on. And so we do have a track for those of you who want to specialize in that area. We have wonderful opportunities for assessing learning in social media, which can be a little bit challenging. So but this was a good workshop to help you address that. Um, using Facebook in a teaching context, always an interesting proposition. And uh, also uh, Twitter, and just as you can see, a wonderful one on Interact and Engage, Simple Recipes for Better Social Media Experiences, which should be a very practical, hands-on kind of workshop. And finally, we have our Tools and Techniques track. This is where we focus specifically on the technical aspects of uh, teaching and learning with various tools. So everything from uh, learning Moodle better, for example, to uh, learning how to include podcasting in your teaching and learning environment, or including audio and video, or uh, YouTube, or developing your PLN, your personal learning network, uh, search tools, and so on. So uh, again, we think we have some really great opportunities here. And as you work through the program, as Renee mentioned, you can choose to specialize in any one of these tracks. So for example, if you decided to specialize in tools and techniques, you would select your three electives from this, these options here. Or if you decided to focus on blended in teaching and learning, you would choose um, three from this group, or you would take the blended learning series of three workshops, and so on. Of course, if you prefer to be a generalist, um, either because you are uh, in a position at your institution to help a lot of different faculty in various uh, 
areas of teaching and learning, or simply because you want to just pick and choose from a variety of uh, areas, you can simply select any three workshops uh, as electives from any of the tracks to round out your program. All right, so that's our electives. Before I go any farther, does anyone have any questions on the electives at this point? You can give me a smiley face if you don't have any questions, or go ahead and type your question into chat, or raise your hand to let, uh, let me know you'd like to speak. Great, I'm getting some smiley faces. Renee, can you tell us what did you specialize in when you went through the program and how did you feel about the overall quality of the workshop electives that you had? Uh, I think, and, and my memory is, is, I can't depend on it unfortunately, I think I, I did the design and delivery track or I didn't do a track. So it was one one or the other, but I can tell you um, that I remember the courses that I took. They were um, the one about academic integrity with Melissa Alt. Um, I took the copyright um, workshop with Linda N. Hagen, and I took the podcasting uh, workshop with Ray Schroeder, <coughs> excuse me, and Brooks Oakley. And this is going, I remember them. I remember all my faculty because they were top notch. Um, there are still resources to this day. Um, and the, the information that they provided really was um, just helped, helped me provide better service to my faculty here at Seton Hall um, by giving me research, by giving me examples. And by working with the, the, my fellow classmates in this workshop, I was able to get different perspectives. Um, so I, personally speaking, I think it should be six, um, six workshops because there's so many amazing options to choose from. Um, but I had a great experience. The faculty were and, and continue to be phenomenal, um, and, and my classmates too. Thank you, Renee. I really appreciate your comments. I see there's a question in the chat. Um, how do we define blended learning? Well, thank you for that question. You know, we have two different um, types of blended learning workshops. One, the blended learning series of three workshops focuses on a blend of face-to-face and online teaching. So this would assume that you are teaching your course partly in, on ground or in the classroom, uh, physical classroom, and partly online. Now, we also recognize that many institutions are more moving towards a blend of uh, synchronous and asynchronous, but all online. So they might have weekly synchronous meetings uh, supplemented by some sort of learning management system where some asynchronous work is being done or uh, assignments are being submitted and so on. So for those of you in that, uh, situation, we do have a, series, a set of workshops that emphasize the synchronous, asynchronous blend online. We also have the high flex design which has you take a look at the blend from both angles. So what you're really looking at here is designing and thinking about what's best for face-to-face -face or what's best for synchronous, what's best for asynchronous. And then we also have this what faculty need to know about blended teaching and learning, which really looks more at the blended teaching and learning from a face-to-face -face and online aspect. 
So we have both options there, um, depending on your situation. Does that answer your question, um, Ari Fur? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Fantastic. Any other questions about the electives or about the foundation course structure? Can more electives be taken once the certificate is completed? Yes, Joy, thank you for asking the question. We do have the option for you to complete the certificate program with your three electives and then take another uh, set of electives to uh, add to your um, specializations. And of course, we encourage everyone to take as many workshops as they're interested in whether they want to apply them to the certificate program or not. Um, we think we have some really great uh, workshops um, and some fantastic facilitators of each of these workshops. I will just tell you that these workshops are developed, all of our workshops are developed by faculty just like you um, that they um, they have a lot of online teaching experience and they want to share that experience with other faculty throughout the world. And they have a real love of helping faculty and it really shows through in what they do in each of these workshops. And as Renee mentioned, it is a nice mix of uh, research and application. So you go in, you're, you're being modeled great ideas. Um, and things to do in the online environment. In each of these workshops, you're being introduced to some research that is the basis for the, the content, and then you're having plenty of opportunities to apply that to develop some interesting thing for your course or uh, to uh, revise something that you already, already uh, have developed. And again, these facilitators of these workshops who have developed the courses are, are from all over and from a variety of fields. So it's always great to pop in and you know get the perspective of somebody who's teaching in the social sciences or the humanities or the sciences uh, and so on. All right. So let me see. We have talked about the foundation course and we've talked about the electives. Now what I'd like to do is take you for a little peek into uh, what the foundation course looks like in the Moodle environment. Um, before I go any further, how many of you have used Moodle before, have either taught in the Moodle environment or who have been a student in a Moodle environment? Go ahead and give me a smiley face or a thumbs up or give me a green check. All right, I see we've got a few. All right, thank you all. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a peek. For those of you who aren't using Moodle, feel free to type in the chat what, what learning management system you are using um, at your institution. And I will take this opportunity while we're talking about learning management systems. Just because we're teaching this program in Moodle doesn't mean that um, we don't address other learning management systems. So for example, in week two and three when you start talking about quality online courses and the syllabus and schedule, we have you go and find out what sorts of supports you have at your institution for your particular learning management system. And we even help people form groups to help each other like all of the Blackboard users and all of the Canvas users or Angel or Desire to Learn. So you have plenty of opportunities to share information related to uh, and work on activities related to your specific learning management system and your specific uh, web conferencing system. 
wow, I, I am seeing some learning management systems in the chat that I have never heard of before. Eraser, vSchools. All right, I have to know. Joy, do you have a microphone? Can you tell us a little bit about um, Eraser? I'm curious. Genzibar slash eraser, okay. Sure, Joy. Totally up to you. And let's see, Victoria, V schools. V schools. Victoria, are you in a, a high institution of higher ed or a K twelve institution? Yes, we can hear you, Victoria. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Victoria. Were you finished, or did you have more that you wanted to say? Um, no, we have no Okay, so Victoria, you're breaking up a little bit, and some folks weren't able to he to hear you. I apologize for that. Um, if you could go ahead and turn off your mic, Victoria, and I see that that you have put your contact information in the chat. Thank you so much. So for those of you who are interested in learning more about this V schools, which is a new LMS to me, and um, uh, then you have her contact. Thank you so much, Victoria. And if you could summarize what you said in the chat, that would be fantastic. Joy, are you ready now? Oh, okay. All right. So it is Jen Zavar's LMS. It's another interesting one that I haven't heard about. One of the great things I like about the program is when you are all talking about your various tools that you'll be using for online teaching and learning, you really get some information, uh, some some great and new information and ideas about new LMSs. For example, I learned from some colleagues about Canvas, and I took that back to my uh, old institution and uh, approached the, the particular people. And we happened to be just getting ready to upgrade our system, and we actually switched to Canvas. And I don't know, um, I mean, I'm sure somebody else would have heard about it, but you know, I felt fortunate to have learned about that from some 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 folks in the foundation course and then take that back to the institution and see something done with it. So, All right. So let's go ahead. Thank you, Renee, for joining us. Let me go ahead and switch to our, this is our environment for the certificate program um, that we were running in 2011. And this is in our one, Moodle 1.9 version. And the, um, as you can see here, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Moodle, there's a three column arrangement. And in the left, we have some information. And our facilitator loves Twitter. And so she encourages people to tweet uh, information and ideas. Um, it's optional, but they get some really great conversations going on in Twitter. And she pulls those into the, the um, foundation course. 
in the center we have all of our content and this particular facilitator loves to do video weekly video announcements to kind of cover what has been gone before and what's coming up for the current week, reminders and so on. And then in the right hand column we have some links information. But this is the home room, if you will, for the entire certificate program. So the entire year or up to year that you're in the program, this will be your home base where you have access to all of your program materials, access to your um, all of your assignments and activities and resources throughout. And as you can see, we have it's structured exactly like what we showed you on the website earlier. We start out with introductions. We go to quality online teaching. With, and each week there are activities, reading activities and discussion activities. And then uh, a few times throughout the foundation course you start work on things, uh, concrete things like developing your online syllabus and schedule, developing some online learning activities with assessments and so on. So it's just fairly straightforward, laid out pretty well with an intro, your objectives for the week, um, your reading activities. And we have a lot of course reviews. Several of our uh, mentors have uh, provided little video peeks into their own courses that they've developed that focus on the topic of the week. So for example, when you're learning about syllabus and schedules, you get some examples, um, some live examples in courses that are currently running. And, um, and it just goes on each week. You have you know, your overview, your objectives, your reading and discussion activities, your course reviews, and so on. And then, uh, then you begin working on your electives and um, for each elective that you complete for the program, each of your three electives, you fill out a reporting form for that elective uh, stating what you learned, what you took away from that workshop, how you're going to apply it to the development of your course, um, and what obstacles you foresee in trying to, to uh, apply that information. And then your mentor works with you to help you address those obstacles and to help you really apply that information well. And then at the end of the program you have a final portfolio presentation where you, um, where you pull everything together from your foundation course and your electives uh, into a presentation, a reflective presentation where you talk about what you learned and how you um, are applying it to your course development, and then you show off your course that you've been developing for the up to year of the program, and you get feedback from your mentor. And of course, throughout the program, you get help from your mentor. So if you have any questions while you're trying to apply the information, um, they they can, you know, help guide you in the right direction or help you with technical skills if it's a technical issue and so on. And um, and of course, everybody, when they finish the program, they do get a wonderful, um, suitable for framing certificate stating that you've completed the program and, um, and if you specialized in a particular area uh, in one of the track specializations, then you will also get information on your certificate about what you specialized in. Again, this is the home base now in 2012 because we are upgrading to Moodle 2.1. It will look slightly different, but uh, nothing that all of you can't handle, I'm sure. Um, again, this is, I think, um, a really uh, well laid out uh, online course. And many of our participants that have gone through the program have mentioned that not only do they get great overt information via the readings, the research, and so on, but they absolutely got lots of 
covert information, if you will, because just because of the way that the program was laid out, the way that the facilitators facilitate the foundation course and the electives and so on. So throughout the entire program, not only are we modeling things, as Renee mentioned, um, so we're really, you know, walking the talk with, um, with best practices. Um, but you know, also providing you with really great information and opportunities to develop skills. Any questions about this, um, the foundation course or the program at this point? I see Daryl uh, has asked, are you using enterprise or open source Canvas? I I believe they are using open source. Daryl, I believe they got the open source version and are doing all of their own support and, uh, and hosting and so on. All right. So I'll go back to the uh, website for a second and scroll back up to the top of the page. Um, as I mentioned, we have a cohort starting on January 4th, and you can see this is a it's in blue, so it's a link, and this is where you could register for the foundation course. Now we're taking steps to also include the same registration in our general registration page, but right now this is where you would locate um, register for the program. And again, we do have three other cohorts uh, forming uh, throughout the year. And uh, we'll pop you the Link. To this page so that you can bookmark it and peruse it at your leisure. Over on the left, I do want to draw your attention to our certificate testimonials. We have a, a lot of testimonials rolling through. You can pause them by clicking on it or rolling over the, the area so you could read them or you could go and view them all. But we have testimonials from a number of people, from vice presidents to faculty developers and faculty, um, all who have gone through the program and um, really felt that it was valuable. If at any time that you have questions about any of this, you can easily contact uh, for support. Down here at the bottom of the page, there's a contact us so that you can get your questions answered. And our customer service representative, uh, Gail Sullivan, is extremely responsive and you will get an immediate uh, feedback. Um, for your questions um, and help with registration and so on. Even uh, information about whether your institution is a College Pass member and you qualify for discounts and so on. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go back to And so that was our web tour, and we've now come to the official chat and Q and A session at the uh, end of our, towards the end of our webinar here. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity again to ask if there are any questions that any of you have about the program, uh, or future plans for the program, et cetera. And they can, of course, be questions related to your specific concerns. I see Karen is typing something into the chat. I look forward to that, as is Henry. Fantastic. Q 
Karen uh, asks, is there an institutional rate for the program? I am going to turn that question over to either Kathleen or Sandra who know much more about the administrative side of this program. Karen or I mean Sandra or Kathleen, do you either one of you have an uh, answer for Karen? So I'll, I'll jump in for a second. Um, Karen, that would be one of the things that I'm not sure if you're asking about a large group of people from an institution or just one person um, would be trying to do the program. Um, because if you're thinking about a large institution type thing, we would have you talk to, to us as, as a separate aside. Um, and then Henry's asking about the discounts. Um, traditionally, for discounts, there aren't any for the $14.99. But for the workshop passes, if your school is an institutional member, you would be able to use um, their institutional discounts based on an institutional membership. Um, if you're an individual membership, there are workshop discounts for that. And if your school has the college pass, um, you can use those passes, which would make those those part of the past purchase and you wouldn't have to pay for those separately. So Karen, with, with that, um, those, those would be the, the same $14.99 price, but at that point, if you're looking at three to four people, you might want to look at the college pass, which would make it substantially cheaper for, say, like a 25 seat thing. Um, that might be a better fit for you because that, that could save you some funds there. Thank you, Sandra. Karen, did that help answer your question? And Henry? Fantastic. Um, if you have, let me give you an email address. Uh, Sandra, confirm that it's certificate at sloanconsortium.org. Is that right? That, right? that is correct. All right, so I just popped an email address. This is a specific email for questions about the certificate um, program. And that would include things like uh, membership discounts, college pass discounts, um, specific other information about the uh, course content. And also, if you have questions about, hey, is this program right for me, and you would like to talk with someone personally more about your specific needs um, based on your skill level or, or what have you, then you can email that, and it'll, those types of questions usually get passed along to me, and I typically uh, call people on the phone and discuss the particulars with them to make sure that you know they're making the right choice for their needs and uh, professional and personal goals. Are there any other questions regarding the certificate program? Go ahead and give me a smiley face, either in the chat or in the um, participant window, if you are uh, good to go. All right. Well, thank you so much for attending our webinar on the Phone C Certificate Program. I hope that I was able to answer your questions that you came to the webinar with. And um, if you still have more questions, please do feel free to email certificate at sloanconsortium.org. We uh, will happily answer any questions that you have regarding the program and how it will best meet your needs or the needs of faculty at your institution. Uh, again, thank you so much for